things a really, really, really important part of uh, rock and roll history. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to play it today and all those little R&B licks that Hendrix threw in there. So before we play it, I'm going to play it along with the recording in Express Scribe, which is a software I like. It's a dictation that allows you to slow the MP3 down to a more manageable tempo. So this is at 70%, and I'll play that intro just along with it so you can kind of see what's going on. first make sure you tune your guitar down a half step so you can play along with the recording and I would recommend mastering E minor pentatonic in all the positions of the guitar um, because what we're doing is we're kind of implying a really beautiful chord progression more or less with our thumb to carry most of the bass notes and we're playing what uh, is mostly E minor pentatonic little little riffs over top to fill out the chords and make the shapes so first thing we're gonna start up the 12th fret our thumb comes over the top and I'd recommend using your thumb for as many of the bass notes as you can, just because that's kind of how he would do it. If you're a classical person used to playing up here like this, it's going to be a little tough at first. Bring that thumb up over the top, and uh, it's, it, this is a good technique to know how to do. So we start by hitting the strings, lightly touching the strings, so they don't make a fret, but so they make that chunk of chunk of Jimi Hendrix sound. So we go on a down strum, and then on an up, we apply pressure to basically create as an E minor chord. Right, you're used to seeing a bar chord like this. We're just playing string six, one, two, and three, and a nice smooth gliss down to the open E. So it's good to know, you know, this is our 12th fret or our octave of our E minor. Then we move into our first lick where we play from the fifth string open, hammer on to two. We use the third string open to move to the fifth position. So what we're going to do right here, double stops in the 5th position on strings 4 and 5, hammer onto the 7th fret of the 5th string, move that double stop over to strings 4 and 3, hammer onto 7th fret of the 4th string. Then we move to this, we're moving to G major in the 3rd fret, thumb plays the bass note, we play G, then the 3rd string open, another G, and then we do this quick hammer on and pull off. But let that ring. The double stop will be on strings one and two. Then we bring the ring finger over to the fourth string at the fifth fret. And then we're filling in this, this chord here, what we, what we know of as a G major triad. You may know it as a bar chord that looks like this. But it's the same notes. We're just playing it Jimi Hendrix style. As soon as we add this in, we're ghost noting from the B to the C. Something you know, um, this might be a good time to talk about is if you listen to the different live recordings of Hendrix, there's always changes and there's always little improvisations, and so you know it becomes somewhat of a moot point when you're playing it to say, right here, do I strum strings two and three or three and four? Because you know, depending on the day, he might hit or which. So you know, for learning the song, you might want to try to really get it down, which is in this case would be strings three and four but he was you know he was he was pretty loose as far as which ones he was hitting during this, these kind of little harmonies he was playing so but anyway up to a minor thumb on the bass now what we're gonna do is we play uh, sorry come up here we're just we're basically playing and 
notes. At the end of these notes, he loves these little <laughs> quick little slides off. We move up to the seventh position to our E minor chord. We play our open to E, the octave here at the seventh fret. And on the second string, we have our middle finger to play another little hammer on a pull off, kind of like we did down here. Hit it again. Hit the fifth string at the seventh fret twice. Then we begin this little run of it starts with a double stop. So the melody is playing 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 10, 9. But we're kind of double stopping as we go. It's important to hear this note twice. Once. Uh, thumb comes over the top. And now we're playing a B minor chord. And we have a ghost note from the 7th fret to the ninth fret. We move that down one fret to B flat. Same kind of shape we used here for our G. We're connecting B minor, B flat to A. And pretty much everybody plays this like this. But you know, I'd recommend if you can playing it with your thumb on the bass again. I just think I think that's a, kind of a cooler way to do it. Sorry, I blew that. It's pretty late here, uh, but I want to get this done. Down to G, third string open, and then this really great chord voicing. That's a root, a root, a fifth, and a ninth. And so it's super dreamy. It's the same chord pattern he used in Castles Made of Sand in the intro there. But you play root, then the third string open. Apply your ring finger to the fourth string at the fifth fret, pointer finger to the second string at the third fret, and pinky at the fifth fret of the first string. We hit it. We move it from the third fret to the fifth fret. And then a hammer on. I use my pinky for this. This is the only way I can figure this out. Because he's really playing what you can think of as an A minor with a C in the bass. I think that's probably your best way to finger it. He may have done something like squished his middle finger out to grab that, but I can't do it. Slide up to the fifth fret. One last little run of double stops, starting at the seventh fret. 